All right. Welcome to uh, the first event for CrowdSpring series on how to grow your small business. I'm Jason Beyer. I lead marketing and partnerships for CrowdSpring. I will be uh, part of each of these events, uh, introducing the guests that we have. We've got some rock star presenters from some great companies focused on growing small businesses. So this presentation is going to, to be in two parts. Uh, we will have uh, the the first part is let's let's walk through and get some foundational principles for branding. This this uh, the topic today uh, for the next hour is how to create a memorable brand identity for your business. And so we'll spend the first little bit going over some of the fundamentals uh, for this to prepare us for the second half. The second half is going to be a little bit more. Um, interactive. We're going to look at some websites uh, that have been submitted from you, from the attendees. Uh, we've got a couple spots available. Uh, so if you have a website that you want to get some critique on uh, from a branding perspective, completely free. We're going to do it right here. Uh, feel free to share it in the in the chat. And we're going to be able to, to use that as an example to apply what we learned in the first half to the second half. Um, so again, I want to encourage you, if you have, there's only a couple of those spots, we're not going to be able to get to too many uh, during the conversation. So if you've got a site that you'd like to improve a little bit, uh, Marlene, I see, perfect. Michelle, you've got one. Uh, we, will, um, we will take a look at these. Let me grab this link now and get that loaded. Thanks for jumping on that so quickly and being brave. But let's go ahead and start. So again, my name is Jason. I lead marketing and partnerships for CrowdSpring. Uh, CrowdSpring helps businesses build strong uh, brand identities. Uh, we've got, uh, again, like I mentioned, I'm going to share the slides afterwards. So you can come back and reference this first slide. But we've got three guides that I listed here uh, on this home slide for you to, uh, to get a little bit deeper into the material. So the first is a 20,000 word guide on brand identity. It's a lot of the concepts we're gonna be talking about right now, but, but going into a lot more depth. So if you want to explore this converse, uh, topic a little bit more, take a look at that. Uh, the, the next one up is on branding. It's a little bit more uh, accessible, a little bit smaller. And then the third is on rebranding, when you should rebrand, how you should do that, uh, what's the best way to go about that. Okay, so let's jump into this. What I want you to take away as we're thinking about this is that good design is great business. It's good for business to have good design. And I think the best quote from this is the CEO of Jaguar Land Rover. And he says, if you think good design is expensive, you should look at the cost of bad design. Because design is helping your business. It's moving it forward. It's prevalent in all of your marketing materials, and it's going to set the expectation that clients have from you. And that expectation is, is, uh, is challenging to overcome. I think this, this is a McGraw-Hill magazine ad from a couple of decades back, and they were specifically talking to advertisers, talking about the problem that they're facing. And this is what you as a, as a business owner are facing on a regular basis. It's, you know, you, you're trying to overcome uh, your clients and your customers not knowing who you are, who your company is, who your products are, what your reputation is. But if you're a for-profit company, you're trying to sell a product. And so you're trying to sell it at this huge disadvantage, right? And so this is where branding uh, helps make this process easier. So what is branding? Uh, a brand is a sum total of all the experiences that someone has with your brand. So this is uh, this isn't just your 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 logo. This is your your customer service experience, right? So what what happens when somebody talks to your customer service folks? It's your sales process. It's your um, it's the emails that you send. It's the uh, return policy that you have, right? We've we've probably all been on a on a on a hold call with customer support for fifteen minutes while they continually replay the message. You know, you're a very valuable client. You really mean a lot to us. And it's like, no, that's just words, right? Your, your, your brand, your action is saying something different. Um, and so that, that is your brand. Your brand identity is what other people can see, right? So this is the logo. This is the website. These are the visual ways that people interact with your brand, probably for the first time, especially if they're, uh, they're seeing it, somebody else use it. Uh, before before they've had a chance to interact with your full brand, with the customer service experience and, and the other aspects that go into your, your service and products. I think this image does a, a great job of summarizing what a brand and brand identity is, right? And so this iceberg, 
90% of it is underwater. Only 10% is seen. That 10% is your brand identity. This is what people can see and interact, uh, see before they start to interact with your full brand. But the brand identity on its own um, can't exist. It needs the support of everything underneath to push that brand identity to the surface, right? And so I think this is a great visual cue to remember the relationship between your brand identity, what is seen, and the brand, which is the sum total of all of the experiences someone has with your company. So the most important part of all of this is your brand image, because what you say in your marketing materials with your customer service folks in your emails, it does carry some weight. But how a customer perceives your brand is what ultimately matters, right? So an example of this is you can say that you're innovative, but if a customer perceives you as not innovative, then that is, that is, not, that is not resonating, right? It's not a strong uh, brand position. And so part of what we need to do is we, we need to create brands that resonate with how our customers perceive us. So we need to constantly find out from customers, what are they, uh, how are they thinking um, about us? How do we, so if we want to be known as innovative, but customers are saying we're not, we need to fix that problem, right? Maybe it's something simple. And so the next part is, is symbols, right? So symbols play a very important role in your brand identity. And the reason is, is because we process images 60,000 times faster than text. It's very quick, right? And so I bet if you're walking down the street and you see somebody on the other side carrying a, a white coffee cup, uh, with a green symbol on it, you don't need to read it to have that association that it's probably a Starbucks cup, right? And and once you associate that, you start to associate a feeling to that symbol. Hopefully, it's a positive feeling. If you've invested in your brand, like Starbucks has, you're going to have you know a, an association, a positive association. Once you see that quick symbol, very quickly, even if you can't articulate and understand what that symbol. Uh, says from a far distance, right? And so another example, of this is Nike. Nike is a pretty popular brand. Uh, a lot of people like them. You know, they've got a symbol that represents a lot more than just the product. When you see that Nike swoosh, you're thinking about innovation. You're thinking about status and lifestyle and fitness. The reason is, is because Nike, companies like Nike, Apple, um, Starbucks, they have a lot of consistency in their marketing. Right. So everything that they do, going back to that brand, is influencing uh, their 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 decision on what to include to create that strong brand, to have that association with this image of innovation and lifestyle and fitness. Right. So they're, they're constantly thinking about this and being very consistent in their marketing. And so this is what, what we're talking about, that every decision that you make affects your brand. There's no decision, you know, the, the paint that you use for your office, if you have a physical building, the, uh, the font that you use for your website, the words that you use in your email. Everything that you do is affecting your brand in, in a positive, negative, or neutral way. And so what you want to do is find the ways that are going to advance your brand in a positive way. So if you're if you're a little overwhelmed, you're thinking, OK, you know, how, how do I, you know, I sell this service? You know, maybe it's maybe it's pretty straightforward. You know, I, I cut lawns, um, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's you know, where do I take this? We go into a lot of, of detail on a SWOT analysis in our brand identity guide and SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. And it's and it's a way to break down the opportunity and, and, and how you can position your brand. And so in the guide, we ask certain questions for each of these topics to help you understand uh, where in your business you could uh, you, you could you could position and, and create that stronger uh, brand and, and, and then create that brand identity from that. So. We're almost through this this presentation before we make it a little bit interactive, uh, and then I'm going to need your your help uh, to do that. And so before we jump into that portion, you know, we've talked about brand, we've talked about brand identity. Let's talk about some of the elements. Let's get comfortable with looking at a a brand and understanding, you know, what is what is what is right and what is wrong and, and what we can fix. So let's go through some of these these elements. So the first thing is, is a brand has to be memorable. Right. The whole purpose is is to create repeat clients, uh, to create word of mouth, 
uh, we, we want something that can be remembered. We want to stand out from the tens of thousands of business owners doing something very similar to what we're doing, right? And so we, we want to be able to create a memorable brand. That's one thing we're looking for. One thing that drives us crazy at CrowdSpring is to see the very generic graphics. You know, as you can see here, some of these, you know, all of them look the very similar style. Some actually are the same, but what you're seeing here is something that you would get from a logo design generator, something that um, uh, just attaches a generic symbol to your name, you know, mashes it together, and it's going to do something very similar for tens of thousands of other businesses doing the exact same thing that you're doing. And so what you end up with is a lot of images that are, are unremarkable. They're not memorable. Uh, they're, they're very generic. And so this is what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to create something that uh, creates a strong connection, a strong memory, so that people can become repeat clients and, and share the, the conversation with others about your brand. It has a brand has to be meaningful. It has to look like you put effort into the positioning that you're trying to take in the market, right? So the problem with those generic graphics is they're just mashups of, of generic logos in your name. Uh, there's no meaning. It doesn't look like you you sat down and really understood. You know what are you trying to do with this brand? Who are you trying to speak for? What are you trying to do to help them? Um, it it just looks looks very generic. A brand has to be likable. Now, this means something different based on the product that you're selling and the audience you're talking to, right? So uh, if you are selling a service or a product where you're trying to position it as more fun and lively, um, that likability is going to be different than perhaps uh, positioning your product for an elderly market, right? The likability factor for an elderly market, what you should be thinking about is how do I make you know, the font bigger so that they can, they can read it? Right. How do I how do I use imagery that resonates with somebody that's older as opposed to younger? Uh, so likability really matters on the type of product that you're trying to talk to and, and uh, about and the audience that you're trying to talk to. Right. You want to make sure that that is that is combined. It's cohesive. It makes sense. Um, next up is transferable. So the brand has to be able to be uh, used in a variety of different mediums. So you want to be able to use this on social media or in a postcard for print or on your website or uh, on the side of your building. Uh, you you want to make sure that it that it that it can that it can move to these different elements. And, and we'll look at physical examples, the ones that don't look as transferable. They don't look like they can move from different mediums as easily. Right. Uh, so a couple more. Uh, the brand has to be adaptable. Right. And so so what do we mean by this? We we want to make sure that that it grows with you. Right. And so your brand should really, um, you know, if you think you're going to have more than one product in your lineup, you might not want to you know, talk about this single product, you know, Joe's lampshades, if you plan on selling you know, other fixtures as well. Uh, you want, you know, a good example of this is Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola has kept really their same style for you know, over 100 years, whereas Pepsi, their competitor, um, has, has really continued to change it. And the problem with constantly changing your, your, your logo is all of the brand equity that you've built in, that memorable memorabilia, to, the, the, the ability to remember your brand um, is lost, right? And sometimes you need to if you haven't invested much in, in a visual brand identity. Uh, but you want to you want to be careful that when you're creating this from the beginning, that it's adaptable, that you're going to be able to grow with it, that you're going to be able to offer the services that you want. Uh, protectability for your brand. This doesn't mean you're going to send cease and desist letters to everyone uh, for you know, using parts of your, your elements of your brand. What it means is thinking about a custom brand right from the beginning, right? Thinking about, uh, you know, think about those blue generic uh, medical images that we saw earlier. They're not protectable. They're, they're, they're stock uh, uh, generic logos that are, that are created. You can't protect anything there. There's no, there's no brand there to protect. And so that's what we're looking at when we create something custom is something that we can own, something that we can protect for years in the future. All right. So here's the interactive part of the interactive portion. Let's look at some actual examples uh, to to understand kind of these these foundational principles, principles we talked about, you know, how they actually apply to logos. How do they apply to a brand identity? Right. All right. So this one, I'm, I'm going to ask you to use use the chat. And, and give me a response here for uh, which of these logos is unique and interesting. And the important part as you're thinking about this is why, right? And so why is 
Uh, so Adrian, appreciate it. You said Bog uh, is unique and interesting. Why? All right, Michelle, again, Bog. We got lots of votes for Bog here. Daisy, Johnny, great. Uh, but why? So Michelle says it's different. Okay, and I think that's that's critical. We talked earlier about um, you know things looking too much the same. Um, Daria says the frog looks like a lamp. Again, kind of memorable, right? So if you are if you go to a place one time and somebody asks you, hey, you know, what was that store called? You might not remember the name, right? But you can remember the actual. Um, the, I'm trying to read some of the, the, the comments here. So we've got frog. You can remember some of these elements, right? Whereas Melia's store, the hanger, uh, you know, it's it's very generic. It's so if you went to the, I don't remember the name of the store, but they had a hanger in their logo. Okay. Um, so the, absolutely. Although uh, Melia is very generic, I, I agree. So tens of thousands of business owners, I mean, uh, are going to use something like this and it's just not going to stand out. One thing you might not uh, realize, so Bog Street, a little inside information, they, they sell guitar accessories. And so what you can see in the white space of the frog is a guitar, right? And so what we've got there is, is a, a nice element that creates something unique. You're not getting that um, uh, in just something generic, right? All right, let's do another one. So which of these logos is more versatile? Okay. So I'll give you, give you a minute here to give some thoughts. Love the participation so far. More versatile. And, and, and versatile really means, you know, how can it be used in different areas, right? And so, Michelle, great. Aldo, great. Beehive, appreciate it. Wh why? Why is it more versatile? How can this be used in a variety of different areas as opposed to the generic logo on the side for, for the company name? Michelle says Beehive could, could have 3 million products and services, right? So that's another aspect of versatility, not just where it can be placed, but the business model itself. How many products can they can they sell under this? Whereas the generic company name looks like they're really re relegated to, you know, kind of the bakery or, or, or food goods. Um, uh, Beehive is a mascot. Uh, absolutely. So you can pull that that image out. And you can use that on products, on, on T-shirts and in your marketing materials. There's really nothing to pull out with the generic logo on the left. If you pull out one of the elements, it, it just kind of falls apart. It's, it's, it's a combination of the name and, and, the, and the generic graphics. If I just pulled the bread out, it's not going to be a very unique, um, unique logo. The other thing I'll point out is it's going to be very difficult to move this around on different um, different elements, right? And so if you have a social media avatar for a business, you're normally not gonna use your, your profile picture, you'll have your logo. If you're working with a, a constraint that's much smaller, so if you're pushing that logo into a small space like on social media, it's gonna be very difficult to understand that. Beehive, you can really pull out the actual uh, logo itself, the, the, the graphic, or you can pull out the logo type. The logo type is unique with just the words. So you've got a, a couple different areas there. Uh, Katie mentioned that, that it's a clean, simple. Uh, it, it can be recognized on any background color. I think that's a great point, right? You want a logo that uh, looks great on white, like most logos do, but you also want one that looks strong for, um, for other elements, right? And so uh, on different, different, different areas. Okay. And great to have you from Norway. Yeah, keep keep up the comments. All right, let's go to next here. Which of these logos is more unique? Okay, so we've got Space Monkey, Partners on the left, Grounded Coffee Shop on the right. Which one looks more unique? Okay, Space Monkey. And again, why? Why is, why is the monkey unique? as opposed to our other grounded coffee shop. All right, I think Daria sums it up. There's a chimp in a space suit, right? Like how many times are you gonna see that? You can remember that. So you actually don't know what Space Monkey Partners does, uh, you, you know, so, but you can remember that image. So, so if somebody asks you later, you know, what was that company? 
Um, I don't remember, but it's a chimp in a space suit, right? That's helpful. Um, okay. Uh, I heard the, the right side is more unique um, for the grounded coffee shop. Would love to hear why. Okay. Um, so what I see on the right hand side is, is um, you know, Katie points this out. The coffee mug is always associated with coffee, right? So there are 10,000 businesses out there selling coffee that have a coffee mug in their design. And so if your friend asks you, hey, that great coffee shop you went to, what was the name of it? I don't remember, um, but it had a coffee mug in the design. It's not going to be very helpful. Uh, it's very simple um, in its layout, but so is Space Monkey. Space Monkey is uh, kind of simple as well, simple font. Okay, so that's more unique. Let's look at a couple others. Uh, which logo uses color better? So we make a lot of decisions in our life based on color, which companies we're going to work with, which foods we're going to eat. Um, you know, we've got our favorite colors, but sometimes certain colors work better for our brand and what we're trying to communicate. So guy next door, great. Well, why is the color better? Adrian, Serene Clinic, why is that color better? Okay, let's see why. A guy next door, blue equals credibility. Absolutely. So that's a great comment. You know, blues have meaning. Um, you know, they're, they're, we have this in our brand identity guide. We walk through what each color means. And so your blues are going to mean trust and stability. Uh, greens are going to mean wealth and growth. Uh, that's why you see that typically with banks. You know, red is, is typically used in uh, sale signs and, and stop signs because it means, you know, hey, pay attention, you know, stop, uh, take a look. Uh, so the guy next door, the color pops. That's a great, that's a great um, uh, observation, Daria, because, you know, one way we would talk about this is contrast. There's certain co uh, colors that contrast better, that pop more than others uh, when they're used together. And so blue is a, is a darker color. So that against the white really uh, has some nice contrast and pops nicely. The Serene Clinic, that orangey yellow on the white background, is very difficult. Uh, to be able to see that, right? Uh, Katie points out that color associations can, can change based on the culture you live in. Absolutely. Um, yellow is not normally a serene color in the U.S. Absolutely. Uh, and so when we're talking about, we don't really know what Serene Clinic does, but you know, looking at the name, they're trying to create a calming, peaceful environment, but the color that they're using is not matching that brand. There's a disconnect there. We want to create connections between uh, the brand identity and, and, and what we're trying to, um, to sell our brand. I think the other thing I'll point out is the, the use of color in Guy Next Door. And so they, they, they have the, and typically what we associate with a clean window, it's a window cleaning company. Uh, a clean window should be able to, you should be able to see out it very easily with no obstruction. And you see that within the design, they've kind of carved out part of that white so that you see, you know, this is a very clear image uh, behind it. And so I think that's, they're only using two colors, but I think they can communicate a lot about their brand uh, through this logo. Okay. All right, let's look at the last one here. Which logo is kind of a, a big mashup? It's clean, it's simple, it's easy to understand. It's almost everything we've just talked about. You know, which logo and, and why, right? Why is it um, more clean and simple and easy to understand? Okay, we've got Sugar High. Okay, why? Why is it awesome? Okay, we've got we've got one thing here. So there's a donut, vinyl and donuts, absolutely. All right, so you can see the image that they're using is kind of this. It could be could be a record. It could be a donut. There's a bite taken out of it. Um, you know, it's it's making this nice association with something sweet like a donut uh, that resembles a record uh, that that matches you know the name sugar. Okay. Uh, you know, I think what's nice about this is either one of those elements could be pulled out. They're using a font that is that is uh, unique, uh, so you're able to pull that that out. Or you could just use the donut and the and the the bite taken out of it. Okay, some great comments. Yeah, so sugar high is kind of our winner here. It's easy to. Uh, I like Katie's uh, comment here. It's easy to see and read. 
Um, I think that's that's very critical, right? You want something that you can scan quickly. Think about the logos that people have on the side of their service trucks, right? And there's so much going on inside, but they're going by at 30, 40 miles an hour. Sugar high, you could read that. You can take in all the elements very quickly. Um, the uh, the stamped on the other side that we're going to get to now is, is there's a lot going on. I want to point out Katie's comment here uh, that sugar high could be used on any background. That's very critical. I think a lot of times when we're designing a logo or thinking about a logo, we're looking at it on white. And uh, that's great until we start to actually use it out in the real life and we can't use it on white all of the time. So we want to think about that versatility of the logo. Where can it be used on different background colors? So let's look at stamped. Uh, there's a couple problems with, with stamped. Uh, the first is it's trying to communicate a lot with their words. So you can, you can kind of read stamped patio solutions, but it's really difficult to read the words on top. Up top, it says it's not just concrete and on the bottom says, excuse me, garage floors and more, there's a lot of content to read. That's gonna be very difficult to try to read. Well, it's very difficult for it to read standing still. It's gonna be very difficult to read if you're moving and, and going past a billboard or you have to scan too long to take in all of the information. Uh, the other problem here is there's a lot of elements. Uh, they're all generic elements. Um, so it's difficult to, uh, to, to pull out any of these. So we could pull out the donut record and maybe even add some color if we wanted to later. Uh, and that could be on its own. Very difficult to pull out some of these generic elements like the stamped floor and the, and the uh, uh, pergola uh, above it. I think that's how you say it, the little sunshade. Uh, Katie mentioned is not sure what stamp means and how to associate it to patios. Um, so you don't, with a name, it's nice if you can associate the name with the service. A lot of times that doesn't happen, right? So it's that's part of your brand story. Maybe your brand story gets a little deeper into the, the name and what that means and how it associates uh, to the product or service that you're offering. Uh, sometimes it's great to be able to have, you know, Sugar High Records kind of understand what you do, but I also don't know, are you a producer or do you sell? Do you collect? Do you help consult and advise others? You know, you're still not clear on that, but it's a great visual image. The job of this visual image is to create some memorability and to entice me to learn more. And so once I once I click through their website and start to read a little bit more, I, the logo has done its job. I've, I've understood kind of that they're serious. I understand what space that they're in. And now I can learn a little bit more about them. So stamped, yes, I agree. I don't quite know what they do, but it's also not critical for the name of your business or your logo to you know explain everything that you do. If you look back at the Space Monkey Partners, you know Grounded Coffee Shop is about as specific as you can get. Um, it's it's communicating very clearly. Yet we all agreed it was a, a terrible logo. Uh, Space Monkey Partners, again, I don't know what they do, but that I don't have to know that in order to remember them or in order to engage a little bit more. So I agree we don't know what Stamped might do, but. Um, now, I think we can say that their visual brand identity is, is a little confusing uh, to take a look at. Okay, so a couple more things before we get into the live review of a couple sites. Um, so the first thing is, is a style guide. So you're not going to be the only one, if you're the business owner or maybe a marketer, working on your brand. You're going to have other designers, you're going to have other employees, um, or you're just not going to remember a year from now, right? You want to make it easy for yourself. And, and one way to do that is to create a brand style guide. We go into this in the brand identity guide, but a style guide will uh, uh, have a list of the colors that your brand uses, right? So that you know exactly what to use for print, what to use for online. It'll have your logo uh, in a variety of different acceptable uses, uh, right? So where, how do you portray your logo on a white background? How do you portray it on a black background or a darker background um, and, and different different associations it'll have it'll get out of just your 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 logo type and look at fonts you know what type of font do you use for headlines what type of font do you use for subheadlines what type of font do you use and size for your body copy these are all things you want to do if you start to look at some of the big brands like uh that we looked at before nike and and apple and and uh starbucks you'll see a lot of consistency they're, they're not changing up the font on you or the colors it's all very consistent both online and offline and so no matter the size of your business you it, it, you want to match that it's a very simple way but often overlooked way 
to uh, create that association in your in your customers' eyes that you're you care just as much about them as Nike cares about their customers, as Apple cares about their customers. It's crazy to think about that, but it's a very simple way um, to follow the same style that um, Apple and, and Nike do just by creating that consistency. But a lot of times it's it's ignored. One way to make sure it's not ignored is to create a style guide and make sure everybody, um, everybody sees that. Okay, let's look at when is the right time to rebrand? Um, so the time to rebrand, we talked earlier that you don't wanna to rebrand too often because you wanna build some brand authority around a, a specific style. Um, some people will decide to rebrand when they when they've realized that you know everything we've just talked about now if 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 your brand looks more like the the visual brand identities we we were we were critiquing uh then you might say okay you know what it's time to invest in the brand uh it's time to start with something stronger uh so that's that's one way and another way is if it's a bit outdated you've outgrown it uh you know maybe you you know started with joe's lampshades and now you've gotten into you know interior designing uh, you know, you've outgrown that space, so it's time to change, or, or it looks a little dated. It, you know, you're using elements within the design that, you know, were acceptable a while back, but, but uh, now we'd like to, to, to try something different. Another way, perfect example is Uber for the example of having a poor reputation, but trying to communicate that you're moving past that, right? So a visual brand, changing a visual brand identity is not going to fix uh, your bad reputation, certainly not the cause of it, uh, but it can signal that you're trying to make a change, right? So if you've uh, taken over a new business where the, the the previous owners, you know, did not do a great job with the reputation, you want to show, hey, we're different. Uh, you know, a, a visual brand update is a perfect time to do that. One thing that can be fun with a rebrand, I'll say, is to involve your customers. So you can, you know, if you if you already have a nice client base, uh, you can get them involved in it. You can you can share a couple different styles with them. Uh, it's a very intimate experience to be able to give feedback on a company's brand. Right? Imagine if you were able to give feedback on Apple or Nike or or Coca Cola's brand. Um, you know, it's kind of a fun process to be able to invite your customers to say, "Hey, look, you know, we're turning a new leaf." We're changing. We're making these changes. We value you. We value your opinion. You know, here's the three. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give them everything. Uh, I wouldn't let them design your logo for you. But give them three examples uh, and say, hey, you know, which of these three do you like? We value your opinion. And and these are the customers that you're trying to uh, to work with. And so so that would be helpful. We actually offer that within CrowdSpring. It's called focus groups. And when you create a logo project, we give you the ability to easily share that and get votes back from clients and colleagues and, and other professionals. Okay, we've got a question here from Kadia. Feel free uh, to, to ask your questions. We're gonna get now into the, into the second half of this where we're gonna look at a couple uh, live examples and, and we're all going to give feedback on what we just learned here. We'll try and spend a couple minutes for each one. But if you have questions, I'll, I'll try to get to those uh, uh, as, we're, as we're talking. Um, so Kadia's questions, what are the best practices to do a rebrand without alienating very loyal customers, especially if you do a full sweeping rebrand, name, logo, color, et cetera. Great question, right? I think the first thing is, is you want to make sure, so Katie's response here is involve your loyal customers in the process. That's what I was talking about, about, you know, kind of the focus groups or, or letting them uh, letting them vote on on what you like. I think that's a great way. It shows them that you actually care about your their opinion um, and also gives you feedback because, they're the ones you're trying to actually work with. Um, you know, you can, before that process, you can understand very early on, we talked about um, the brand image, aligning what your customers actually think about you with what you're trying to say. So ask them, you know, what do you like most about what we're doing? What do you not like? And incorporate that within your brand, within your brand identity, okay? Um, a very heavy change, Katie, is, is yet another full new brand. X is now Y. Although maybe can you expand on that a, a little bit for us? Uh, but Katie, I think, you know, you want to be careful with this. You, you want to figure out the SWOT analysis is great for this. What is working? And you want to keep that. And if you're doing a full rebrand, it's, it's because you're keeping your customers in mind. Either there's something that they don't like or there's something that you're trying to serve them better with. And so you just want to communicate to them and I think involve them in that process to, you know, the best that you can. Um, 
hopefully that if, if you got a follow-up question let's feel free to 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 follow up here let's get into some of these uh these ideas here i'm gonna i'm gonna load these up and share my screen and let's see all right so i'm going to ask for everybody's feedback here uh, you'll see the the screen share in just a moment here as it loads and what i'm looking for is the same thing we were doing with the logos let's take a look at uh you know the analytics okay and and so what we're seeing here is i'll, I'll give you a chance to take a look i'll, I'll scroll a little bit here uh, feel free to give some some feedback based on what we just learned and and other aspects of this brand that you want to talk about okay so we're waiting for comments to come in i'll, I'll start with some feedback um yes michelle that's someone's site from the group that gave us permission they wanted uh some feedback on their site uh, so we're trying to to help them out here so johnny says simple and versatile i agree lots of white space uh, actually, it's Mary Beth's uh, site. Uh, so Mary Beth, I, I see you're here. So we're taking a look here. So, but feel free to, to give some actionable feedback. You know, what are the things that are going right? And let's look at some of the things that we think we can improve based on what we learned. So let me start while some of the, the, uh, the comments, well, the comments are flowing in. Let's see. So font is not easily readable for those of us who wear glasses. I think that's important, uh, Avery. Uh, great point. I think it's important to understand your audience, right? So is your audience a little bit older, you know, or, or just wearing glasses in general? I think that's that's important. A lot of white space, okay. Uh, so much smaller, absolutely. So different browsers, it's going to look differently, right? And so I, I look at my websites on a 30 inch monitor, but it's gonna be very different than on a, on a web, on a, on a phone. So you wanna take a look at your, um, your 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 site on a variety of different devices because your clients are using them uh, on this as well. So let's look up at the top. You know, one thing that we notice here is um, is the language. So remember what I mentioned. What we want to look at is every single decision that you make affects your brand. I want you to think about uh, those things. If there's two things you take away from this, it's that good design is good business, and that every decision you make affects your brand, right? And so what looks like happened up here in the header is that there was a, a lack of space. Uh, so they pulled out a couple words that really changes the, the style and it doesn't make it sound as professional. So we completely full for September instead of we are completely full and, and are taking no new clients is what it should be instead of and taking no new um, projects. Uh, and so what that does is it, 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 it makes it sound like you know, it, it, we don't care. We don't care about the customer. We don't care to to figure out a different way to say it. Uh, you know, we're in a hurry. Those are not things that we want to communicate, right? And so there's a there's a copywriting saying, if I had more time, I would have written less. And that's essentially what the customer sees is that, oh, you didn't take the time to figure out a, a better way to communicate. So we want to be careful. We want to read out loud the stuff that's on our website. We want to have somebody else read it for us. Um, we want to take a look at all of those. I, I like it's a very clean, lots of white space. Um, you know, what I what I don't like here is there's so much white space that, uh, you know, if you're on a smaller monitor, you're going to have to scroll down to be able to see the rest of this. We want everybody to see. We're taking a little bit more time on this site because we're going to use some foundational principles here for the other reviews. And um, what we want to I, I see a comment we can't read those words at all that i was reading so we completely full for september and taking no new projects uh is up here in the in the top uh it's the little banner that shows up up here uh so we we want to make sure that above the fold above the fold is a term for everything that loads immediately on the site uh so it's before you start scrolling down it's uh you know you have you, you can see everything we want to communicate what's most important about the business above the fold before we start scrolling. The reason why you're seeing so much here is because I'm on a much larger monitor sharing this. Uh, but if it's a standard, you know, Mac monitor 13 inch, it's gonna cut it off right through here. We're, we're gonna miss that. So we wanna make sure that the white space isn't too extreme. Uh, one of the last things I'll say here, and I'll look back at some of the comments real quick, is the image that you use. The images that you use are designed to help move the brand forward. This image is a great supporting image. And what I mean by that 
uh, is it's great later in the content, later on the site, to endear me to the owner and the brand, right? So there's this nice, um, you know, message, Pepper the Viking dog, okay, like, you know, uh, cool, I, I like that. I see you, um, you know, kind of engaging. I see you writing on on the same, you know, notepad that I have that that looks just as, as, as ruffled and used. So I, I like all of this association, uh, but it's not a great hero image. And the reason why it's not a great hero image is um, you, you want to see, you know, the, the, the person, the subject, Presumably, the owner is turned away from the customer instead of engaging with them. Um, it's not communicating, you know, maybe what I could get out of this is, you know, a client call or attention to detail. But you really want to have something that talks about the business. You know, the, the, I think one of the great things for a consultant is to be looking directly at the camera or working with a client and having a custom image that that looks um, that looks strong. What I do like is it's an actual image. It's not a stock photo. I think that's that's um, that's really helpful. Uh, we'll we'll get to Katie. We're not going to get to all the comments, uh, but we'll look at Katie is here. The logo could be more interesting. Almost too much white space. Not sure I want to read on. Uh, not sure what business impact means and how I can see a customer in this. So there's a lot here. I mean, part of it is is testing the language. I think you're right. You know, business impact is kind of generic, you know, so so is there a better way to communicate that? Um, part of that could be an A-B test. You know, part of it could be around, you know, actually explaining what you're going to deliver and in what time frame. There's a lot of different ways to do that. Insight Lime Analytics, again, looking back at our, our kind of review, you know, it's it looks like kind of a, a generic uh, Lime that you could find within, you know, kind of Photoshop galleries and then the name Insight Lime Analytics. There's no real font treatment there. If we just pulled, you know, one of these two elements away, does the brand lose some of some of its um, ability to communicate? If we just showed the line, would you immediately remember this company? If we just showed, you know, the 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 name, you know, would you be excited to learn more? So a lot here. Um, I think some great comments. Uh, all of these will be will be you know recorded, so you can go back and look at some of these comments as well. Let's take a look at uh, another site here. So this is a, a home improvement site. Let's see here. So give me some of your, your feedback here. What, what are you seeing? Positive and negative. I shouldn't say negative, it's, it's things that we wanna change. You know, things that, things that are hindering the brand. Uh, so Daria says it's straight and to the point. Okay, yeah, it's it's home improvement. It's It's something that's, we, we see the the tools and the imagery that's typically associated with that. Johnny says it's too busy. So this is something that's critical. I think that's absolutely right. If you look, there's a lot of different elements going on. So they're all elements that make sense for the this company, uh, but it's it's distracting, right? And it's distracting in a way that um, you, you know, I, I don't know how to engage, you know, if I if I bounce around and look at the nails and the hammer and the and the tape measure that's not helping me move forward towards the towards the brand. I think one thing to think about, you know, what I'm seeing here is what's the clear call to action, and a call to action, or, or sometimes called a CTA, is what you want the customer to do. And there is a call to action here, right? And so I think that's a great a great thing. Your home repair solution book online. It's not a not a very clear call to action. You know, I'm not really sure what I'm booking. Am I actually booking the repair? I'm not ready for that yet. I don't know, you know, I don't know you. I don't know, you know, what services you offer. I don't know your reputation. So it's a little early to just book and I'm not really sure what I'm booking. But the bigger problem is that it's lost. It's the same color as all of the other elements. Your CTA really needs to pop. That call to action needs to be something that has contrast and doesn't blend in with the other elements, okay? Um, okay, so things about harder to read. Uh, Katie had mentioned she doesn't know where the logo is. Uh, I'm not sure the brand identity is easy to miss. I'm, I'm not sure if there is a brand, you know, um, logo here, a visual brand. There's certainly colors. So yellow is a predominant yellow and white is certainly a color. I love, you know, if you want to talk about my two favorite color combinations, it's black and yellow. I love that, that, uh, that contrast. I think it's very strong, but we have so much black and yellow in this image that it's distracting, which I think a lot of people have mentioned. Um, 
Julia mentioned, uh, you know, I don't like the color. Um, you know, I think it, it matters, you know, the likability for the color on, on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to say and who the audience is, right? And so, you know, I, I like black and yellow, but does it make sense for this business, right? Does it make sense for this location? Um, so let's look at a couple other little things. Uh, so DeLuca Home Repair and Renovation LLC. Um, you don't have to, LLC is, is a... It, it's a it's a government designation. It's it's not part of your name. You don't have to have it in your name. I think you want to create something that is easier to read and quicker. So um, you know most you know, small businesses are going to be LLCs, but you're not going to see that in the actual name. Um, so you want something that if you can remove some of the the content, it makes it a little bit cleaner. Now you've got the license number right up top. Now everything above the fold, everything up in this top piece, should be your most important. You know piece of information. So I'm not sure if New Jersey license number is distracting or if that's something that you really need to have um, up there. There's a lot of, um, uh, so I wouldn't use, again, going back to contrasting colors, if you have to or want to or need to have a cookie policy uh, pop up, you know, I wouldn't have it the same as the CTA. This is basically saying that our cookie policy is just as important for you to see as our main call to action to book online. So let's scroll down a little bit more. Okay, so we've got services. Okay, so these are stock images. So let's talk about stock imagery. Very common to see this. Uh, it's not just this site. But, you know, what are the problems with stock? The problems with stock photography is it's designed to be ubiquitous, to be used by everybody, just to, just to have... Um, just to be able to fit any scenario. The problem is, is it doesn't fit this specific scenario, right? It doesn't fit this specific business and what they're offering. And it's not showing that there's a connection to the actual brand, right? And so what I would like to see is actual images of the, of, of the, 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 the work of the owner, of the, of the service uh, technicians, of the, the people that they're working with. Uh, that starts to show more of the brand. It starts to show the audience. It starts to show uh, your location, right? So if you're if you're doing home repairs, instead of showing generic homes, you know, show the homes that you're typically working on in you know the 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 Midwest or the Pacific North uh, Northwest, and and so you know show that style, show those people that you're trying to work with. Okay, custom photography is can be expensive. Uh, but you want you want to show that you you care right about your brand and about the people. Okay, um, so book online. There's the, the the call to action, and I think I've seen this in the comments a little bit. Um, oh, Michelle, I want to get to Michelle's comment. I, I think that's awesome. You know, it would be awesome to see the owner employees actually doing work with the customers. Absolutely, we want that connection with the with the owner with the the service technicians with the people that they worked with i think that's that's huge that's very important because let's be honest there's hundreds thousands of people doing this exact same service there's plenty of people offering guarantees and doing great work right we want to stand out and uh and the way, best way to do that is to um is to show you show something that can't be replicated by anybody else and that's and that's you okay Let's get to another one here. Um, I'm using this Chrome tool called the Great Suspender, and it, it compresses, hides the hides the um, the uh, site, so it doesn't doesn't load in the background until you open it. So, dogs first class again. You know, kind of looking at some of the things that we've been over. You know, what are we seeing on on the site? You know, I'll, I'll say one that you know. Uh, TM is not something you typically see in your in your logo. You know that can be in your in your in your legal documents and and below, uh, but not not right up top. It's also you know kind of an older style. I think we could say this is kind of dated in terms of the um, in terms of using the 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 shadow effect. Okay, it's also a little difficult to read with that shadow and bubble effect. Uh, Daria says, I thought this was a dog training class. I agree. Um, you know, so so we have this one expectation, uh, but we're not sure about about the products that there, there's a disconnect. The products are are not in line with the class, with the name. So if we have to keep the name, let's say we can't change the name or we're very attached to the name or our clients know the name, you know, what could we do with this, uh, you know, just keep dogs first class, but then have that connection association to the products, you know, I would recommend right in the beginning, you know, 
I'm guessing uh, that this is about because I'm looking at these kind of for the first time like you, that maybe you you know, you reward the dogs after their their maybe like an obedience class or something like that. We're just we're lacking clarity and we need to we need to do that. A lot of variety. I saw one of these comments agreed. You may offer a lot of products, but you want to lead with the one that customers are are most engaged with that's going to resonate the most. OK, so there's a lot here that can be can be updated. One I'll point out, one thing that we're looking for is is things that we can look at in other sites as well and, and, and use this, you know, join our mailing list. Why? This is very common on a lot of different sites and join our mailing list. You, you've got to have a reason. What are you doing for me? What value are, gonna, you, are you going to deliver on a regular basis? I doubt anybody has clicked on, on this to engage in a while because there's, there's what's in it for me. You know, why am I going to do this? Okay, let's look at, um, I see another couple sites that came in. We'll, we'll see if we can get to those as well. I'm happy to stay a few minutes after, after the hour to, uh, to go through a couple of these. So we've got Dr. Mo Anderson. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, let's not fault the load time on, on Dr. Mo. Um, it, it's probably on my side. We've got a pop-up right away. I'll, I'll leave it for a moment before I close it. Again, you know, that subscribe, why? Why am I subscribing? What am I going to get? What are you going to deliver? Um, why should I? You know, what's the social proof? How many other people do this? Am I the only one? I don't want to be the first. All right, I'll start us off here with some comments while we're, while we're waiting to, to get through here. So the logo is very difficult to read. Um, so Dr. Mo Anderson isn't, isn't a difficult name. Um, but this, this, this style, the font up here is very difficult. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. Uh, we, we don't want to get too uh, stylistic. We want to communicate a message, right? Darius is not big on pop-ups. I would agree. But here's what I would say on the pop-ups if you want to have one. Um, going back, remember that slide with the, with the white lettering on the black that said, you know, I don't know you. I don't know your product. I don't know your service. If you hit somebody with a pop-up as quickly as it loaded here, the customer has all of those, those questions, right? And now you've asked for something. It's going to be very difficult for them to, to give that to you, give their email, because they don't, know, they don't know anything about you. At the best, you're going to get a burner email. You're going to get one that is, um, is, is useless for you as a business owner because they're just trying to you know, get maybe something that you're promising. You've got, we've got to build that excitement in our products and services before we do the ask, right? And so if you do want to do a pop-up, make it time-based, make it page scroll based, you know, have it lower in the, uh, in the, in the customer journey instead of right away. Michelle points out that, that the arm is a little distracting. I agree. It, it kind of sticks out off to the side um, and, and kind of distracts from a great picture of Dr. Mo, right? She's looking directly at us. She's smiling, looks very nice and professional. It's, excuse me, it's a custom photo. You know, it's not one that's just taken, you know, cropped out from, from another photo. Um, it's very strong, right? But some of these other background elements are distracting from that. Um, absolutely. All right, uh, let's see. So what else do we have? So we've got some videos on the page. I think that's helpful. Uh, you know, one thing we're not going to click through on all the social graphics, but one thing I would say is, you know, these are these are standard that kind of load within your website template if you're using one. One thing to check is to make sure that they actually link to your social graphics. A lot of times they'll just load stock and then you'll find that they just link to a generic, you know, WordPress Facebook page or something. So you want to be clicking through if you're using a template. But I'd also... Uh, ask you to, to look at what are the social platforms that your audience is on. You don't want to spread yourself so thin where you're just on every platform. You want to be on the one or two platforms that your audience is on and that you do a good job of communicating on. So if you don't do a great job of, of communicating videos or you don't like to, you know, YouTube is not the right channel, especially if your clients aren't there. So pick the one or two and really deliver a lot of value on those channels. And maybe Dr. Mo is doing that on all of these. I'm not sure, but we see it a lot where there's a lot of different every social page, but then um, we're not we're not engaging on those. OK, so we've got call Dr. Mo. I like this. That's a call, clear call to action. I'm not sure why. You know, why are we calling? Uh, what what should I get? What should I expect on the other side when she picks up? Is, you know, is it going to be a, is it going to be a charge? Um, 
I think although, you know, not sure what you do, you know, writer courses, you know, uh, presentations, you know, not really sure. So I think being very clear up front, um, never close your heart is, is a nice tagline. It sounds nice, but it's not appropriate for the, the very top. You want to, uh, you want to communicate what exactly you do. Okay. Let's take a look at another one here. This one came in uh, at the at the very beginning. So if you're still on, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, so double solid apparel. All right, what do we have? Give it a give it a minute for some comments. Okay, I'll start us I'll start us off here. I think. Um, so good color contrast from Daria. Thanks for, for kicking it off. Um, so we're, I think we're talking about the black and the white. So I think that's that's helpful. Uh, so as we can see here, so look what's happening here. I mean, we've got the, the logo up top, but then we put it down here as well, because, you know, really, if you want to be able to see this logo, it's got to be bigger. And so we have it here, but I really can't read, you know, this top part. I see wear double solid apparel. It's very difficult to quickly read. You can read if you take the time, especially if you're the owner and you know what's going on. You can read it, uh, but it's very difficult to read logos where you know the type goes all the way around the logo. Um, okay, so we're talking about mental health. I figured out double solid apparel. Um, double solid might be, I'm not sure if that's an industry term or, or, or within this group. I, I'm not aware. I might be the wrong customer. Um, Okay, let's see. So, so if double solid is your own term, you're going to want to explain that. You know, what does double solid mean? Um, if if it's a term that your audience already understands, and I'm just not your audience, you know, that's fine. Uh, you're you're speaking directly to a group. Okay, it's difficult for me to read the um, personal stories of mental health challenges and triumphs. Again, I can but it's difficult quickly, right? And so we're trying to, to do that. Um, oh, here's something. So we, Eacher, um, so this is, this is, you see how it's loading here. So it should be we feature, but the way it loads is it, it takes that away. I'm not sure why that loaded that way. Um, at some point it, 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 it created that. Maybe it's just a problem with, with on my side. Free shipping on all orders over $99. Okay. So what, what are we missing here? You know, one thing that, that I'm missing is what do you do? You know, what, what is your brand? You have something here, as we talked about before, you know, about creating something meaningful. You've thought about it, right? You're not just selling clothes. You're selling a brand. You're selling meaning, right? Uh, but it's, you, we're struggling to understand it. We're not seeing the, the, the story. OK, on the uh, third photo, the face is covered. Yes. I mean, if that's part of the brand, if the brand is about anonymity and and, um, and and not being seen, potentially that could work. But there's nothing that sells a product better than a smiling face looking at the camera engaged. You know, that's that's you know, we want to picture ourselves wearing this clothing. OK. Um, Let's see, logo duplicated if not rolling banner. Yep, okay, we've got the whole vibe by talking about, mental. okay. So here's the other thing, I could read this if I wanted to, if I had the time, uh, right? And But most of us don't. We So I think we're getting into the explanation of what double solid means, right? I'm excited, but it's, it's said in a way that is forcing me to read too much, right? And we wanna make sure that uh, we're, 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 we're chunking out this information very quickly um, and, and, and being able to communicate so we can just skim a little bit more, okay? Looks like some user-generated photos maybe down here. No, some, uh, some, these are nice photos, so I like this. I like seeing it on the people. I think what's, what's incredibly helpful here is to see it on your type of audience, right? And so if these are the type of people that are wearing your clothes, make sure they're in the photo shoot, right? We don't want to have a disconnect where you have the wrong generation uh, wearing your, your clothes, right? You want to make sure it matches. But I love the high quality uh, photos here. Um, so spend the effort, okay? We've got presumably, you know, the owners or founders maybe. I, I've, seen, I've seen them a couple times here. Customer favorites, put these at the top. 
right? These should be these should be what the photos. If these really are the favorites, the ones that are selling the most, make sure you have you know photos of these people wearing it. Make sure they're up at the top. Um, again, look at you know this just looks unprofessional, right? Uh, where you have a white background here, and then you've got a different background here and on this one as well. And so you wanna create something that looks similar. If you go to Nike, you're not gonna see one of their products on a white background and one on a, on a different color within, within the, the little square. You know, maybe this whole area might be a different color or white. You wanna think about little things like that, okay? Um, yeah, I'm loving the photos. I'm loving that, that you know, they're high quality. Um, this is, so this is not, this is a user generated photo. Somebody took this photo of themselves, I, I think wearing, uh, and, and it's a case study. Um, so, I, but I think that's okay. You know, a lower quality when it's a case study is good. Let's go back to some of the, the comments here. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, so I guess we, we covered uh, we covered a lot of this. I, I like the stories. Yeah, I think just really what I'm, I'm seeing. So here's something that jumps out right away is this color pattern. So this color pattern just jumped right out to me. The style jumped right out to me as being different. This is the first time I'm seeing this, right? And so I'm like, whoa, you know, something's, there's a disconnect. The colors are wrong. Now we're going into this orange and yellow. We've got, you know, you know this, this Halloween-ish um, font here, but I haven't seen that before. You know, these are little things we don't want to have that disconnect. Looks a little sloppy. We've got what looks like kind of a Photoshop uh, cutout, you know, here. And, um, and so, you know, we, we just want to look at, look at our site and make sure that all of the imagery, you, you know, is professionally done. And because uh, professional images mean you care about the product, right? So as a customer, I'm thinking, okay, if you don't care about the image that's selling the product, do you care about the quality of the product? Do you care about the shipping uh, of the product? Do you care about the customer service or return policy? You don't want customers thinking about all this. You just want them thinking that your stuff is cool and it matches their, uh, their, their taste at, at, for your audience, okay? All right, we've got time uh, for, well, I just looked, we're, we're past the hour, but let's, let's do one more. I had seen, um, I had seen it earlier. I'm not sure if, if you can just go ahead and, and throw one more site here in the chat. I guess first person that throws their site in, we'll take a look at real quick and then we'll get it wrapped up here. All right, Armor Pack, perfect, Justin. You were one that I was gonna try and find. So I'm glad yours, yours got in there. Let me, um, let me just type that in here and be a little easier. Hopefully this has been fun and informative. It looks like a lot of you have, have stuck around, so so great. And I, I think, um, so Justin, let us know um, where are you at with, with Armor Pack so we can kind of keep that in mind. I think you mentioned earlier, maybe it was somebody else that just launched. So if you just launched or you haven't launched yet, I wanna keep that in mind um, as we take a look at this. But so Justin says, we're a couple years old, business to business. Okay, so this is my space at, at CrowdSpring, so certainly familiar. Uh, so let's let's give him some feedback on our on our last one here. Um, what do we think? So Katie says, the logo is featured nicely. I know who this business is right away. Uh, while we're talking about the logo, I would say, uh, yeah, the feature, the placement is difficult to read, right? And so... Um, so the background is 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 contrasting um, or, or not contrasting enough with the with the words. So everything is kind of lost. I'm really I'm looking at a at a 30 inch monitor here, and I'm really kind of trying to focus a little bit more. Um, the actual logo image looks like it's out of focus. It looks like maybe it was blown up to to reach this size, uh, this size. Okay, uh, so. Armor pack. So armor pack, you know, to me, pack makes sense, especially when I see the packaging. Okay, I know the space. Armor, you know, is is something like, you know, tough, it's strong, it's reliable. Um, that doesn't jive with the image. You know, the image that I'm seeing looks kind of like the, the Firefox swoosh. It, it looks like, um, you know, kind of shows movement. Uh, so there's a disconnect there between, you know, the, the image that you're using and the brand name. Again, I don't know much about the brand yet. This is just kind of first first impressions. Uh, what Katie said the background image is busy um, and it does hurt readability. Yeah, there's a lot going on, right? And so I'm distracted on where to look. You know, I'm distracted because of colors. You know, my eye gets kind of pulled towards the bright, uh, bright green and red up in the top. I'm distracted by the brand. Now I see maybe, are you working with Apple in the bottom right? 
Um, I'm distracted by you know, some of the chocolates that look nice, right? There's a lot of distractions. The problem with distractions, especially above the fold, right? When somebody loads the pages, where, where should I go, right? And you never want people to, to try to figure out where to go. Um, uh, Michelle said, I don't know how the products relate to one another, but I like the image itself. I agree. And, and, and this is tough as business owners, right? We like the stuff that we created or we like the stuff, um, you know, that, that looks nice, but it doesn't necessarily have to take front stage, right? This could be a perfect blog post image or perfect uh, image further down on this page or another supporting page, right? We can like the images, but still, because I agree, it's a, it's a great clear image, kind of shows some, some different variety, but it's not the placement of it. Um, it it's not great right here on the homepage. Okay. Katie said, uh, I don't understand the reference to armor, which we talked about. Uh, the connection could be clarified. Okay. Let's scroll down a little bit. Let's, let's kind of move off here and see if we can understand a little bit more about what, uh, what they do. So custom printed packaging. Okay. Now I know. Um, printed folding cartons, flexible packaging for the cannabis industry. Okay. Um, so I like that. You know, I think I got that here. So if you're there's a there's a great beauty with niching down, right? If you can niche down, if if 90% of your work comes from the cannabis market, you know, really hammer in there. And and I would right now there's a disconnect. Are you working with Fortune 500 companies or are you working with startups? Are you working with electronics or are you working with food-based products? Are you working with cannabis or are you working with um, you know other other industries? So that's a little confusing. So if cannabis is a big focus, you know. Let's let's use supporting graphics that talk about that. I'd love to see something like this up top. You know, tell me what you do immediately and help the images support it. Uh, let's see. So we've got a stock image here. Um, so this is kind of inside baseball, right? And so the owner and and me as a designer and some others will pick up on. You know, these are these are different colors and color codes that you could use for your design. But the person coming here that is starting up a cannabis um, a business or another packaging, uh, needing packaging, doesn't, doesn't care about the inside baseball. They don't care how the sausage is made um, and certainly not with a stock photo, right? And so we don't want, stock doesn't communicate how you're different, right? And so, um, you know, so this isn't, I don't think as, as strong, as, you know, the placement of it. Uh, you know, you're, there's another thing, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is you could, you could do more by talking about you or the company or showing, you know, your clients or showing products in real life. Okay, let's scroll down. All right, we're at the end. All right, so we're, uh, one thing I'll point out real quick, copyright 2019. Um, this, this shows me that are you not, are you not in business still? Or are you, are you, um, uh, you know, have you lapsed? Uh, so I would just keep this updated for all of us. Make sure you scroll down, look at your copyright, something easy to forget, add a calendar reminder, uh, because as you're scrolling through, you don't want these little hesitations. It's hard enough to grow your business. You don't want a little hesitation with somebody that says, oh, you know, are they still in business? Maybe I won't contact them. It's 2019. It's a few years later. Uh, it's a very simple, a very simple change. I think what's missing from this, uh, feel free to, to give some, give some uh, thoughts here. You know, one thing that I, I think is, uh, and maybe it's, maybe it's under their work, but I would share the work that you've done, right? Because if this is work that you've done, it looks strong, but show it in user generated uh, ways, you know, the, the actual customers taking pictures or show it in real life, show it on product shelves. I think that can be helpful. Um, Katie mentioned case studies about the clients featured in the hero image. Absolutely. You know, talk about the clients who's using this and, um, yeah. Anything else before we before we sign off from here? Any other feedback for Justin? I think we covered covered quite a bit, and then everything else that we talked about as well as we're talking about here, you know, can certainly be helpful to um, to look at as well. I think a, a perfect thing for this business would be to tie an Instagram account here and have user generated photos of the products, especially after a couple of years if you've been doing some of this work. Um, I think I think you probably have some nice nice clients. Okay, well, thank you so much for your your time. Uh, thanks if you shared your site. I know it's it's uh, you know it's, uh, hearing the criticism or, or or ideas about moving forward. Hopefully that was uh, was helpful. But I do applaud you for sharing your site. I really appreciate that. It gave us something to to talk about. 
um, from here. Uh, but thanks so much for joining and we will talk soon. See ya.